God is opening up again a new gate of a season, not only to the nation but in your life. That is my prayer. Like David put it in the book of Psalms 24, let every gate open, even the everlasting gates. Welcome back for another wonderful Wednesday night. I'm so glad that you are with us. The Lord is so faithful to be able to give us really wonderful, insightful, empowering things. And, and one of the wonderful things that God has brought to us this Wednesday night is we have gentlemen who are here with us. And we have over on my left, Julius. Ça va? Ça va. <laughs> okay. Yeah. And uh, Julius, just say hi to the people, please. Hello. Praise the Lord. I'm happy to be here. And I'm honored to be here. And over here on my right, we have Michael Kamuli. Michael, just uh, greet our folk and uh, tell them a little bit about, about where you are from and that you come here to America for a special trip to be able to help us understand about prayer and breakthrough. Yes, that, that's my name and I come from Uganda. I actually came on the 21st of Uganda to do a prayer conference to be part of it. Well, these gentlemen are really carrying an unction and an anointing for our region. And I'm going to read a portion of scripture that they have brought to, as you know, we, we always begin with a, with a verse of scripture or a couple of verses of scripture to be able to anchor our program. And it's from 1 Chronicles chapter 12, verses 31 and 32. We're reading from the New International Version of the Bible today. And it says, from half the tribe of Manasseh, designated by name, to come and make David king, 18,000. From Issachar, men who understood the times and knew what Israel should do, 200 chiefs with all their relatives under their command. And uh, gentlemen, tell me why you brought this particular portion of scripture for us to be able to really look at as we begin our, our prayer program. Uh, first and foremost, I believe that times and seasons is a key issue to understand because everything in life operates on those two. That is why at times you, you need to ask, you need to find out why someone asks you, how old are you? How old are you? It has to do with time. <laughs> and some people lie about their age because right. of the accomplishment, yeah. because the accomplishment doesn't match with the age, mm. with the time they have existed. So everything is all about time, whether nations, whether cities, whether families, has to do with seasons and times. There are good times and bad times, negatives and positives. That is what Ecclesiastes tells us. There is a season and a time for everything. Time to laugh, time to cry, time to be born and time to die. So ups and downs, but the question is how do we prepare when God is changing a season, when it's a different time? So do we really understand where we are today as nations, as the United States of America, where is this nation as far as God's calendar is concerned? Amen. And you know what? The, these men come to us from Uganda. And I, I, I want to just kind of touch on a little bit of the history of Uganda and what happened there over the last 50 years, I, I, I will say, mm -hmm. going back to the time when Idi Amin was in power and then Obote after him, and, uh, and, and the difficult, difficult things that were going on in that nation. Mm -hmm. My wife's uncle, uh, in fact, uh, he, he and his wife were Canadian missionaries to Uganda yeah. during that time. And when Idi Amin came in and he took over, he became extremely dangerous and hostile to people who were spreading the gospel, people from foreign lands. And, and so the, the Canadian missions board that he was serving with, they said, you have to get out because you're not going to be safe. And so he got his family out and they went to Malawi, they got them 
down there, but he kept on coming back to get out some of their vehicles. He was a pilot and they had an airplane and he got that out. And, and so there, this was a season and a time when people were in dreadful fear for their own lives if they were declaring the claims of Christ. And yet we had seen over the past 20, 30 years that there was a tremendous breakthrough that God brought mm -hmm. to Uganda. Yeah. And I, 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 I don't know, I'd like to hear from either of you or both of you how this happened. Because people think that the, the times, speaking of times, that you're living in, that we're living in here in America, we're in some dark times here in America. And, and, it's, and we're not wanting to hide from that. But the times can change. Times yes. do change. Yes. You, in your lifetime probably, Michael, have seen some of these changes. And you're a little bit younger, Julius, mm. but, but still you have this fresh memory of, mm. of these times with your father and mm. what he must have lived through and the, the generation immediately before him. Yeah. But Michael, maybe you'd begin and just share with us some stories about the, these seasons of change that really took place there in Uganda. Yeah, I, I'll, I'll begin by saying, uh, not talking politically, because most people think it's all about political climates that change. But behind such changes, there is a church behind, a church praying, mm -hmm. that, so that these seasons can change. Otherwise, some people might think it's automatic, but it's not automatic. For, for some changes to take place, like uh, the Bible tells us in the book of Daniel chapter 2 verses 21 that God changes times and seasons. He brings kings and removes them. He gives wisdom to those who need it. So I believe that uh, if God is ready to do something, he always looks for a partner. Mm -hmm. be, be, if Daniel had not prayed, when the time of Israel had come to an end, the time of exile, I tell it, the enemy would have prolonged that time because yeah, the enemy works yeah. on ignorance. Yeah. When we do not know, that is the legal ground of the enemy. He wants to ride on our ignorance. But Daniel understood what prophet Jeremiah had spoken, had predicted, that Israel will be in exile for 70 years. So when the 70 years were coming to an end, he began to pray in that gate of the season, of change of season. And that is the reason God helped them. You, you made a statement about the gate yeah. of the season. Right. It's almost like there's like, I've never really heard that before. And so it's kind of intriguing to me. Wow. You know, we always think of gates as some kind of a, a, a logistical place, uh -huh. you know, a physical place. Uh, but not necessarily thinking of a gate in time. Yeah. And, and so could you elaborate on that just yeah. a little bit? Every, everything that God created has a foundation or what we call a gate, has a genesis, you know. Your, your birth date is your gate yeah. into this the world. Gate yes. you came in. The yeah. day you married is the gate mm -hmm. into marriage. And when we talk about seasons, the beginning of the year, look at every season. When the seasons change, like right now, we are in a very critical get. Mm -hmm. That is why people all around the world, you see all what we call Halloween and, mm -hmm. and raising and waking up the dead. All this, eh? it's a get because the enemy waits at the get. The battle is always at the gate. And the Bible tells us in, a, in the book of Isaiah 28, verse 6, that God gives strength to those who take the battles back at the gate. Yeah. So there is power in praying at the gate of a season so that certain cycles will not continue, will be broken. Maybe it, there's been a cycle of drought, a cycle of dryness, and God is bringing it to an end, but he's looking for partners. Who can I partner with? Because prayer is all about partnering with God eh? so that he can accomplish his will here on earth. God's will has never been automatic 
Or otherwise, Jesus wouldn't have prayed for the will of his Father to be done. But if Jesus prayed for the will of the Father, we need to do the same. Mm -hmm. Even the prophetic, between the prophetic and the fulfillment, someone has to pray. There must be an intercessor to pray that prophet through. Mm -hmm. All other ways, people can be dormant and sit passively and time passes and that is what the enemy wants. Mm -hmm. So the, the, that time was the, in Uganda we had prophets you used to come and, and prophesy about Uganda. This is what the Lord wants to do. And we thought all oh, these were fascinating prophecies. We did not do anything about it. <laughs> right. but, but as well, the enemy now took over. Because when you miss the time, you are giving the enemy a chance to take over. Wow. Like Jesus told the, the people of Jerusalem, yes. that you never realize the time of your visitation. And he said, because you miss the time, the enemy will come mm -hmm. and will build an embankment on you and he will take you over and will tramp on you. And that is what happened. So we missed the timing of the Lord as a church. We didn't know what to do. And here comes Idamin, who declared our nation an Islamic country in 1975. And now Uganda became an Islamic state. And the church went through persecution. There was that dark period when the church, churches were declared closed, all evangelical churches, apart from Catholic, Anglican, and Orthodox, if I can say. Mm -hmm. and, and Friday now became the public holiday for worship, mm. uh, like any other Islamic state. Mm -hmm. So it was a very testing period as far as the church is concerned. And some pastors were thrown in prison and some died and vanished in those prisons. It, it wasn't easy until the church rose up to pray. And now when we prayed, we saw God's intervention because it's all about partnering with God, as I said. When we partnered with God, he brought about a change. And little after that prayer, after the change, the church went back in the slumber mode, like it usually is. You know, we are always on and off people, you know. Mm. Christians are mm. always on and off. When there is an emergency, we pray. When the emergency comes to an end, then we stop praying. So, and yet God has not called us to respond only to emergency. Otherwise, we become emergency-oriented or crisis-oriented intercessors. Yeah. And we should not be oriented by crisis, but destiny. We should be destiny oriented love oriented is the love of god driving your destiny so we stop prayer and then another catastrophe came and and this was a civil war mm. now this was a mess people died in masses was this after obote yeah. uh, yes or? that is during like obote's time yeah. there's a civil war we had the gorilla warfare inside and and the, the government could not differentiate between the civilians and the gorillas or mm. the rebels mm. so there was a lot of death there was a lot of bloodshed there was a lot so and this is when the church remembered the tool the weapon of prayer and now we rose up to ask god for help and of course god came in and there after that the enemy changed the trick the tactic now we had HIV and AIDS, mm -hmm. and Uganda was like the leading yeah, yeah. until we thought, Lord, where are we? How, how, do we, how can we call ourselves the pearl of Africa? So we become the shame of Africa at that time until we cried to God. 1990, I think Uganda was leading in the highly infected nation in, yeah. in the world. Yeah by HIV, yeah. but was, there was a lot of prayer. A lot of prayer took place. But we thank God there was a man who was uh, an advisor to the president at that time, who was a Christian, who called the pastors together, said, but the government has done what it can. And World Health Organization is predicting Uganda to be 30% sick. Mm. What can we do as a church? We need to do something. And this is the man God used as a voice a prophetic voice. I believe that God still uses people in the marketplace to be a voice, a prophetic voice like Daniel. Daniel was not a pastor. He right. was not an apostle. Mm -hmm. He was in the marketplace. He was in the political arena at mm -hmm. that time. Mm -hmm. But God used him. 
to interpret dreams, to be a prophetic voice of the time. So that man, God used him mightily, that the church rose up to repentance after we had known that HIV was transmitted through sexual, you know, it was a sexually transmitted disease. At the first, as Africans, we thought it was superstition, it was witchcraft, mm -hmm. and all what people thought, this is witchcraft. Why people die like this? But suddenly we got to know, and when we got to know, we went to God in repentance, and the cry was Second Chronicles 7, 14. My people who are called by my name shall humble themselves and pray, and forsake their wicked ways, seek his face. He will hear and will come down and heal the land. And that was the cry. And when we began to pray, God intervened. And the healings began to take place. Wow. Yes. Wow. So that is how things were like moving on and off. People could put down the tool of prayer and the enemy would come in. Because what the enemy is always after is stop the nation from fulfilling her redemptive purpose. Every nation has a prophetic destiny, but that is what the enemy is after. If he can stop Uganda from becoming what it is supposed to be or doing her part in the redemptive purposes of God, then he's through with it. And I believe that is what is happening in the United States of America. If the enemy can stop United States of America from being a missionary-oriented nation, a city set on the hill, as it was predicted by the Puritans, then he's through with his mission, and that is what he's doing. Today. Well, this, this is really important because it's almost as though there is a call that God has put upon different nations, as you've said, mm -hmm. and, and there is this call upon America that originally we entered into being the missionary sending nation to many other nations around the world, but it's almost as though today, as we're living and we're looking at the circumstances that we're living in, there's so much pulling us into debauchery and into sinfulness and into trying to make us deny the the faith of our fathers, the faith that we were founded on. Julius, I'd, I'd like for you to be able to just share a little bit. People, I, I want you to understand these men have experienced a supernatural revival and breakthrough that is very hard for us to comprehend and for us to understand. But they went from this terrible condition to really a, a breakthrough where God brought about a, a national repentance. And, and, and we'll get into that a little bit, but uh, Julius, I'd like for you just to be able to share a little bit about your story with your father and, and beginning works in the northern part of Uganda, as you shared with me a little bit in preparation, uh, so that people can begin to see this can happen here. This is not just something for over there. This is something that God wants to purpose for a release, and and if you're able, just impart faith, and then as we finish up on what you're dialoguing about, I'm gonna ask you to begin to lead us into prayer, and then Michael will come to you and ask you to be able to join in and pray afterwards. But this is our prayer meeting, folks, and so we do want to pray, but I really want for our prayers to have an infusion of a God-given faith beyond what we are experiencing right now. We need the faith of God to rest in us and to rise in us so that we can believe that God is going to open this door of time for us and to take us into this new era. And so I'm just going to ask if you would just begin to unfold that. Okay. My, my father is one of the people who are imprisoned they were found in church, they were praying, and then they were taken out. They were put in the van and then taken in one of the places and then taken to one of the prisons in the country. But one thing I remember, I was a little boy, I remember people used to come in the home and they pray. And then I remember one time they wanted to, to invade and then we had to keep quiet. And then 
fast forward, even during the time of the, the war, the civil war that we had, my father is one of the people who were hunted down. I remember him s spending days out of the house, just sleeping in the forest. And then one time, I remember they happened to grab him. He was found, and then they put him on one of the military vans, and he was taken, and then one of the places in, in the town. But along the way, he says that when they were taking him, but they said, why are we taking this man? I remember my mother, we remained at home praying. Now, this is after Idi Amin, first word in the Gorilla War. My mother was praying. He said, we, we have to pray. We have to pray. And then while on the way, these men said, where are we taking this man? Let's drop him off. So they dropped him off from the, from the van. And so that's the power of prayer. And then the other thing, my, my father started a church. It started as a family. And then eventually he bought land nearby. And then he said, I think you should build houses for rent. But then he said, no, let me put a church here. So I'm one of the people who are making bricks, mud bricks to, <laughs> to build this church. So eventually he built the church. And then the church grew. Now, the current senior pastor, he used to ride a bicycle from about, he used to ride about seven miles to come to the church, to pastor the church. But right now, as I speak, the community where the church was then, before it became a big church, it was a, a place full of warlocks, witchcraft, and everything. They used, there were cannibals there. And no one wanted to come to that place. I guess. But I remember my father, every day we had an altar of prayer. We prayed every day, every day, even in the church. But now, right now, the church, the community has transformed. It has changed. That on the church, on the village itself, there are more than 500 churches. Wow. And the church itself has more than 1,500 branches around the country. That is the power of prayer. And it only begins with one person. It only starts with one person. If you understand your seasons, if you understand the mm -hmm. seasons you are in, then and possess that gate, then you can get into it. Well, that's really what you were bringing this portion of scripture about, you know, the, the, the men of Israel, the men of Issachar who understood the times yeah. and the seasons. Yes. And so I, I just really want us to begin to pray. And I'm, I'm just going to direct this to our congregation who are watching here. And, and this is airing on a, on a Wednesday evening. And, and I want you to begin to really know that God has called us, you and I and others and Pastor Sam and Pastor Meche and, 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 and Pastor Isaiah and, and we know right now the anointing of God can come upon you and can rest over you. And as, as we just begin to pray, and Pastor Julius, if you would just begin to lead us in prayer, and then, as I said, uh, Pat, Michael, if you would just lead us in prayer, we are going to, we're going to open a gate. We're going to open a gate right now. And so just begin to believe and pray that God would do this work. Amen. Go ahead, brother. Amen. As the scripture says in Isaiah 62, that for the sake of Zionists, for Zionists' sake, I will not hold my peace. And for Jerusalem's sake, I will not rest until her righteousness goes forth. I believe God is looking out to you. Mm -hmm. We cannot rest and we will not rest until we see United States gets into its redemptive purpose. So let's cry out to God, let's pray. Father, we want to thank you. Yes. Lord, we want to glorify your name. We magnify yes. your name. Lord, you are a mm -hmm. God who has not forgotten your word. You are a yes. God who fulfills your word, O oh Lord. Yes. Father, there is mm -hmm. a man and woman out there, Lord, who is hungry, who is thirsty for you, Father. There is a yes. woman who is so depressed. There is a woman, there is a man who does not know what to do next, O oh Father. There is a mm. pastor, there is a, somebody there, there is a, a senator there who does not know what next. 
is somebody. Lord, I pray with, with God, may your spirit move right now. May you touch them. May you, re, may you reveal yourself to them, oh Father. May we let each and every one, let them surrender to you, King of glory. Father, you mm-hmm. are a God of a second chance, oh Lord. Father, we pray that you may forgive us, Lord. Forgive us where we have gone wrong, oh Father. Forgive us where we have gone wrong as a nation, Lord. Lord, we ask you to cleanse us with your precious blood, oh Father. We plead with you, Lord. Yes. You are a God of mercy. You are a God who is so faithful, oh God. Lord, yes. we pray that we come before your throne of grace, oh Father. We humble Thank ourselves, you, Lord. Yes. We humble ourselves before mm. you, King of mercy, oh Lord. Lord, mm. we cry out to you, Lord. Lord, meet each and every woman in their living room, in their offices, mm. in their churches, oh Father. Mm. Meet them, O oh King of glory, Father. May you revive their hearts. May you revive their mm. spirits, O oh King of glory. May you awaken them, O oh Father God in heaven, Lord. Father, we believe and we know because we are still breathing, Lord, you have a purpose for us, O oh God. Amen. There is a reason why we still live. There is a reason why we are still walking, O oh King of glory. Father, I pray that you may open our eyes, may open our ears to hear you, Father. Yes. We may hear your voice yes. speak to us, O oh God, yes. that we may possess this gate of Father. Lord, we are in a critical season right now where the enemy is fighting, Lord. Father, we pray we come mm. before you, King mm. of mercy, King of glory. Mm. Father, may you strengthen us, O oh Father, Lord. Your word that says in Psalms that, Lord, you train us, O oh God, for war, O oh King of glory. Father, we come out, O oh King of mercy, Lord. We pray that you may give us your glory. Yes. May, you may anoint us, O oh Father. Bless your name, O oh Lord. We give you thanks. We give you praise, Lord. We give you thanks. Blessed be your name. Hallelujah. 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 Amen. Yes, Heavenly yes, Father, Lord. we continue to pray as your word. Yes. Uh, tells us in the book of Zechariah chapter 12 verse 16 that you pour upon the house of David Mm -hmm. and the inhabitants of Jerusalem the spirit of grace and supplication. Mm -hmm. Lord, we know that the the, the prayer is a spirit, is an anointing. We pray in the name of Jesus that you Mm -hmm. quicken the church in the United States of America, quicken it to pray again, to come back in the place of prayer, to come back on the mountain where we can cry out to you, Father. We pray in the name of Jesus. We know we don't know how to pray the way we ought to. We don't have that power. But the Spirit himself helps us in with groans that cannot be uttered. I pray in Jesus' name. May the Spirit of God be poured again upon the church in this land. Lord, it's not another man of God they need, not another prophet they need, not another apostle. The need is a another Pentecost experience. Oh, yes. We need the outpouring of the Spirit. Yes. Open the heavens, we cry out like yes, Isaiah mm-hmm. 64. Mm-hmm. Oh Lord, that you rend the heavens and come down. Yes, Lord. That people's hearts will melt, mountains yes, will melt Lord. before your God. Yes, we need Lord. that, Lord, like uh, David put it, quicken our yes, hearts Lord. that we may call upon yes, you. Amen. We can ask by your Spirit, yes, oh God. Yes, we yes. cannot pray, yes, we can't Lord. seek your heart. Mm. We can't seek your face without the quickening power. Mm. We Without the hunger, so give hunger to the church again. Yes. Shake the church out of slumber. Mm. Shake us out of sleep, O oh God, mm. that we may call upon you. Because there is, they seem to be an expectation of a global move, yes. a move of mm. God, Lord. Mm. Yes. Lord, mm. we ask you in mm. Jesus' name, please send your spirit. Yes. Send your spirit. Yes. Open the heavens, O oh Lord. We cry out for open yes, heavens yes. over yes. every nation. Yes, we pray that Lord. you break yes. the grip of darkness mm, that it, is covering the nations like Amen. you promised in the book of Isaiah do 25 name, yes. verse 7 that do on it, this Lord. mountain yes. you will destroy Hallelujah. the shroud Amen. over the people and break yes. the dark Father, sheet right that now. is covering do over it, the nations. It, break the right sheet. Now. Break the shroud do so it, that right you release your spirit of God. Do it the way it happened when Jesus prayed and heaven opened and spirit descended and spoke. Lord, let there be an Powering of your Let spirit your yes, upon Lord. this nation, Amen. upon Lord. the nations Amen. of the world, upon yes, America, Lord. upon Boston, Massachusetts. Yes, you are the gate of America. Lift up your heads, oh yes, you gates, yes, and the King Amen. of glory Amen. may come. Yes, Lord, Lord we speak come. to the gate of Let America. We speak to the gate of, of Massachusetts yes, that it will open in Jesus' name. Yes. That the King yes. of glory, the Prince.
Prince of Peace may come back in Jesus' name. Thank you, Lord. Yes, and Father, we just agree that this gate of Massachusetts Mm. here on the eastern seaboard of this nation, Lord, is going to open to you. Father, even as the dawn opens each morning and the sun begins to rise and it comes from the east and it moves across to the west, Lord, we pray that you will come into America, that you will come in through Massachusetts, that you'll come in through the northeast, Lord, and that you'll pour your yes. glory Rimo out. Zikis. We need your yes. glory. This yes. cannot be done without mm. your presence, power, and glory. Mm. Lord, we are not looking for yes. brilliance. We're mm. not looking for mental Rimo acuity. Zikis. We're not yes. looking for swiftness of thought. Yes. We're not looking for preachers who can articulate the word yes. better, God. Mm. We're looking for you, Rimo Holy Rimo Spirit Rimo of Holy God, Spirit to of come God. and set your Rimo anointing Rimo upon Rimo simple Rimo men Rimo and women yes, who are Lord. hungering and thirsting Rimo for your righteousness. And Lord, out of this Lord, we want to be able to receive, Mm. be changed, be transformed. God, this is your heart. Mm. It's your desire. Mm. You want to transform a nation, Mm. but you transform a nation by transforming us as individuals. And so, God, we pray, Holy Spirit, let your work happen. Begin to do your work now, God. Come. Begin to surge into this nation. Yes. Begin to move through your people yes. and get glory yes. to your yes. name, Lord. Lord. Hallelujah. 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 Thank you, Father. Thank you, Father. We truly bless you. Amen. And we desire you, God. Hallelujah. We need these altars, Lord, that these men are setting up yes, in Lord. prayer. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Father, I pray that as we begin to open up yes, this Lord. next section and we talk together a little bit more. Father, I pray that you'll begin to put faith in our hearts that once Mm. again we can see altars built in our homes, Mm. places where we can pray together, Mm. where your glory will be revealed. And then altars of prayer with other groups, smaller groups, and then churches, and Mm. then areas and regions, Father. Mm. This is something you are superintending. Amen. 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 Julius, maybe you can just share a little bit about this and and how that you brought Michael to help Mm -hmm. to be able to bring these altars. Mm -hmm. And Michael is, he is known worldwide. I hope you'll open up some of that for us a little Mm -hmm. bit about Mm -hmm. where you're ministering around the world, but just share a little bit with us and, and so that we can know and understand how God really put this on your heart about these altars of prayer. Amen. Uh, Three years ago, it has been three years ago, three years now that I've been here, but I've not been moving anywhere. I've only been praying. I've only been praying. The way I came, the Lord led me here. How, How I came, the Lord gave me a scripture that I'm sending an angel who is going to lead you in a place that I prepared for you. If you do not, if you disobey him, he will not pardon you. But if you obey him, he will lead you in places. So the Lord led me here. And when the Lord led me here, I kept on praying that, Lord, what next? What do you want me to do? So eventually the Lord laid it on my heart to start prayer altars. I lead a ministry by the names of Pashua's Worship Network, which has birthed watchmen on the walls of Massachusetts. And our heart is to set altars of prayer in different cities, in different places around Massachusetts, probably even around the United States. Because we believe with that prayer ignited, with that prayer praying and encouraging people to pray, the shroud is going to be broken. This is where we have organized a prayer conference, which is called Watchmen on the Watchmen on the Walls of Massachusetts. Our theme is from Isaiah 25, verse 7. The, on this mountain, I'll break this, I'll destroy the shroud that is covering. We believe there is a shroud that is covering Massachusetts, mm. Boston. Mm. This is a missionary sending city. But today, Boston has become a such a city. Yeah. Boston is called a graveyard of ministers, where ministers come and then they disappear. They are nowhere to be found. But I thank God when the, when the Lord laid this to start a, a prayer altars, I've been moving around and I've found small, small prayer groups. But this time round, we want to join hands as a board of Christ, with the board of Christ around, that we may pray, that we may press in, that we may 
cry out to God that revival may come back to Boston, Massachusetts, to spread all over. This is where I invited Pastor Mike. He is my pastor. <laughs> he sent me. He released me. He prayed over me that Julius, go. That's where you have to be. So that's why I invited him. I said, Papa, come and you start something. <laughs> so in this conference that we are having, from here we are going to be moving around. And then we believe God is going to do something. Amen. Amen. Well, Amen. I know that God is doing something. And, you know, we can get dull in our hearing. We can listen to these words and they can just kind of fall on the ground. Or we can actually open our spirits and we can invite the Holy Spirit to till the soil of our souls. So the word of the Lord will once again be able to germinate and grow up and bring this harvest you know, this harvest is coming. It's coming to those who are, are willing to be pliable and available. Mm -hmm. And that's what I believe God has sent these men to do, is to encourage us. Dr. Elijah Kim sent to encourage us. Many other believers here in, in light of Judah, many of the people from different Hispanic areas of the world coming here uh, and, and Pastor Roberto even wrote that book about, about the pilgrims, but it, it wasn't just about the pilgrims who began and came in the 1600s. It's about the pilgrims who are coming to America, and many of them from Latin countries, Latin American countries, because there's something that is drawing. What is this magnetism? that is drawing people to America from all over the world. People lined up on our borders, trying to get in, desperate to be able to find something. And what it is, is the hope of freedom. And you know what, if we don't really believe God and stand in this, we'll miss our gate and our moment because God is wanting us to arise one more time to be able to have this ability to experience this outpouring of his presence, power, mm -hmm. and release, because as we are made alive, that's what makes us as a nation attractive. Mm -hmm. The ability to have, have freedoms and, and expression and be a conduit of the glory of God. And so I'm just gonna ask you, Michael, if you would just open your heart and just share a little bit about how God's led you really across the earth. I mean, it's really remarkable. And, and as, as, as you just share these things, I know that God's going to put faith into people's hearts as well, because you're here in this appointed time, destined by God mm -hmm. to impart yes. to us as a people something of this revival that you've experienced. And so just, just open your heart and share with us, brother. Yes, um, 19, it was 1995 when the Lord gave us a word, a prophetic word concerning our nation. And we're wondering, Lord, how, are we go how is this prophecy going to come to pass? If you mm -hmm. want to pour your spirit upon a nation of Uganda, how is it going to come to pass? And what is the strategy? Because it's not about the prophecy only, but what about the strategy? Yeah. Because the prophecy does not only prepare you, but it gives the enemy an awareness wow. of what God yeah. wants to do. Mm -hmm. So the Lord is when the Lord spoke to us about building him a net of prayer. He said, build me a net of prayer and I'll fish your nation out of troubled waters. I don't had never heard of something like that. What is a net of prayer? A net yes, of prayer. Yes, a net of prayer. Wow. How do we build a net? I said, go to Abraham go to the strategy, and we called it the Abrahamic strategy of taking Canaan. When the Lord told him, go where I'll show you, the Bible says he began establishing altars everywhere he went, mm -hmm. opening up the territory using the altar, because the altar was a, like a place of communion, a place of attracting God's presence, God's kingdom in a land which belonged to other tribes. And the Bible mentions that Canaanites were still in the land, the Jebusites were still in, mm -hmm. the Perizzites, they didn't know the God of Abraham. 
So everywhere Abraham was erecting an altar, he was welcoming the kingdom of his God. He was opening up the territory. That is why even when Jacob stole the blessing of his father, trying to run away to Laban's house, and he slept in that place of Bethel where Abraham, his grandfather had erected an altar. God met him there yeah. because this was a place of open heavens. And when Jacob woke up after having an encounter in the dream, he said, this is other than the house of God. This is a gate of heaven, meaning heaven as a gate. And what creates that gate is the altar. <laughs> And, you know, you see the gate of heaven, and we also see Jesus mentioning the gates of hell. Yeah. Yes. So we, we need to understand that. So we began to build these altars, I mean, erecting these altars. Not the Old Testament way, because in the Old Testament they used bricks, stones, and all that stuff. Mm -hmm. But today the Bible tells us in the book of Peter that we are the living stones. Yes. When we come together, we build for God a spiritual house and offer acceptable sacrifices. The Bible tells us where two or three are gathered together, touching anything in prayer, God will come. God will be in their midst. So we understood it. Now we began to move the way Abraham did. The Bible says, and the Abraham moved in the land, in the breadth and the length of the land, and establishing altars, calling upon his God, establishing the kingdom of his God. Now we understood what the network is. Then, after doing it in Uganda, the Lord told us, because I have given you this strategy, and this strategy is working for you, you need to take the same to the nations of the world mm -hmm. and be, let them erect altars. These altars are going to open the heavenlies, the atmosphere over the different lands. And that is exactly what we did. And we, we have seen, we, we went to England, we went to, and then the Lord opened doors to the Arab world. I've been doing a lot in the Arab world, we began a prayer movement, a powerful prayer movement in Egypt. Mm. And, and and different other countries that I don't want to mention yeah, yeah. to different countries mm -hmm. I can't mention here. But we have seen great, great impact. You can't believe the prayer movement in Egypt. You can't believe. You can't believe. Because most nations are actually, churches are disconnected. Churches worldwide are disconnected from what God is doing in the Arab world. They feel like, what is there? Yeah. So by the time we wake up, God would have done something in those countries. So God is doing something. And I believe that, you know, uh, th there's a time when uh, I, I met, uh, was it 2005, 2004, 5, I met a group from Iraq after that time. And it was a little bit sensitive. And these men told me how, what they were going through, how the missionaries had closed up, they uh, closed them out and, mm -hmm. and left the country. Mm -hmm. And one of the men who had been really in torture in Saddam's cells, he t the pastor told me, Michael, can you come? He said, I've never been there. He said, but can you come if we find a way? Can you come and bring other people? And no one could dare do that in Uganda. So mm -hmm. I decided to risk. It was not easy. And my wife told me, she tried to stop me, trying to tell all the, my family members. But I said, no, it was like, I was like hearing a Macedonia call. Ah. And I said, no, I'll go. It was not easy at all. I went uh, in Iraq that time. It was such a risk. I lay my life down. Went. And they, of course, we went in. It wasn't easy at all even to enter, even the, the way the planes used to land at that time. Mm. And the people came from different places in buses. And some of them told me, we don't know whether we'll go back safely. Maybe we can end up in landmines. So pray for us. We're coming back. We don't know whether we go back. Mm -hmm. And some groups told me our pastors have been killed. They ended up in landmines. Others were arrested. And died during that confusion. So, but when we came to pray, when we came to pray, we prayed, I've never been in a place where people pray, and on ground you could literally see pools of tears. Wow. Yes, wow. pools of tears. Wow. So, I believe 
you know, when nations come into such moments, God visits them, you know, because God has never worked in comfort zones. He will push you out of the comfort zone and he will visit you. He doesn't visit in comfort. So I, I, I've seen God doing that. I've seen God doing that. I can't tell you many stories now here on TV. But one thing I know is that God has a strategy. And this is a strategy of erecting altars of prayer. And I believe in this awakening watchmen in Massachusetts is key. Watchmen on the walls of Massachusetts. Why Massachusetts? Because it's a gate. It's the gate of America. Mm -hmm. It's where the Puritans came first. And it's where the dream was gotten that America can be a city set on the hill. Mm -hmm. So I believe with all my heart that we need to bring the people back in the place of prayer. The heart of intercession has been lost. Wow. The heart of traveling has been lost. Yeah. So how do we conceive God's purposes when we are not ready, when we are not positioned for it? So we need the church to be positioned for what God wants to do so that we, God must, cons must impregnate you with his purposes in order for you to travel. Otherwise, you cannot learn traveling prayer when you are pregnant with nothing. Mm. Yeah, until you are pregnant. This church, where we seated here, maybe the Lion of Judah, talk mm -hmm. about this church. Mm -hmm. It was an idea. It was a dream. It was God's quickening that fell in the heart of someone. And he became pregnant and began to pray. And it was birthed. And look what God is doing today. Mm -hmm. So if we are always in position of conception to conceive what God wants to do, let me tell you, people will pray again. People pray. Hallelujah. Well, we are going to pray and we're going to pray again and we're going to be just pursuing God. I'm, I'm just going to ask Michael if you would begin this time of prayer. Yes. And as you do, I am believing that you're going to be truly led by the Holy Spirit. And I want you just to even keep your eyes open a little bit and look into the camera and pray yes. for the people, you know, mm. because God wants to get that impartation mm. into the hearts. Mm. Yes. And we want to receive it. I know I want to receive it. I want to receive everything that God has for, for my life, for my wife's life, and for all of the purposes that mm. God wants to loose and release. And you who are watching with us, don't just watch from a distance. Don't just watch as, as observers. Watch and pray that you enter not into temptation, the mm. word says, but, but watch and pray. You know, be, be watchful. That's, that's the watchman on the wall. They're praying that there will be watchmen. And so it's like, okay, well, we close our eyes sometimes, but also we keep our eyes open okay. as we pray. I know that you know, when, when we're walking and praying uh, through the city and, and that, we don't keep our eyes closed no, and stumble yeah, around. No. You know? yeah. We watch and pray. And so I'm going to ask you men to just watch and pray and, and impart the grace of God. And you who are with us and are watching with us, I'm knowing that God has mm -hmm. got something for you. You have been designed for this season. God has birthed you for these moments. You are to carry the glory of God like the ark of God and in the right way, not like Uzzah, mm -hmm. but, but in the, the holy way like the priests of old. Mm -hmm. And so we're going to believe and, and Michael, just, just really look into that camera and yeah. pray for these people. Amen. Yes. Amen. You know, the Bible says in the book of Acts, chapter 17, verse 26, that from one man God made all nations of people and they, that they should inhabit the whole earth. And he also marked out the appointed times in history and the boundaries of their lands. And God, this, this, God did this so that men should seek out to God, seek out from every nation God would like us to seek him, to reach out uh, so that we are partners in prayer concerning the times and seasons set for nations. And when we talk about nations, we are not talking about the block map, that map. We are talking about you, 
you and another one you are america me and another one we are uganda uganda is consists of people consists of you so when it's timing for america it's timing for you your family your marriage so i pray in the name of jesus christ that this spirit of prayer that was prophesied in the book of zachariah chapter 12 verse 10 that i'll pour out the spirit of grace and supplication upon the house of david and the inhabitants of jerusalem the same spirit will be poured upon the church here in america Yes. Lord, may oh, the people, yes, the Jesus. church in America, yes. the pastors, the leaders, conceive yes. your purposes, oh, conceive yes. your plans, yes. so they yes. will travel in your labor yes. world where things are bathed, oh Lord. Yes. I pray, Father, in the name of yes. Jesus, that there will be a travailing spirit, a, a spirit of supplication, the spirit of crying out. Men in this land did it. David Wilkerson did it. Lord, men like William Semwa, Frank Batterman, who prayed for Azusa, the Azusa revival, and they became the catalyst of revival. We pray that some people here watching will become couriers of your presence, will become agents of revival, agents of what you want to do, oh God. Lord, we know this is the time to bring America back in her redemptive purpose, in her prophetic destiny. America has a call. America is a mission nation. No wonder you, it, it intervenes in everything that takes place and becomes a bus food basket. And I believe this is the reason God has spared the nation. I pray in Jesus' name. Do something, O oh Lord. Put this burden upon pastors, upon leaders, upon apostles and prophets in this land, O oh Lord. Let the altar produce a prophetic voice. Yes. Because a, pro a, an, a prophetic voice mobilizes people on the altar. And on the altar, we birth a voice to the nations. Lord, I pray in the name of Jesus, let that happen. And let this happen at the gate, O oh Lord, as yes. we bring back the battle at the gate. We possess the gate of this season in Jesus' name. We possess it for revival. We possess it for a move of God. We possess it for God to bring about healing to this land. Transformation to different states and nations and cities in Jesus mighty name we pray hallelujah glory to God hallelujah 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 glory glory father we want to thank you Lord as your word has said that you son of man that have made you a watchman for the house of Israel Lord we believe that out there there are men you have set out there are men you have made watchmen over their cities over their nation over this nation of oh, father Lord I pray may you release your spirit in people's men may you release your spirits in their hearts of oh, father may you release your spirit in the men and women in the pastors Lord may you release that spirit of travailing that they may cry out oh Lord may you release that spirit may you release your anointing may you release the spirit of prayer and travail and supplication of father that we may cry out for this city that we may cry out for this state that we may cry out for this nation of father lord their pastors their bishops their apostles of father their prophets of father their worship leaders of father lord may you release your spirit of king of glory at this gate of father lord at this special gate of king of glory in the name of jesus christ at this hour at this time time of father may you rise up the altar father of prayer yes. may you rise up O king of glory father lord i pray release your spirit Amen. even through the airwaves right yes. now in the in the offices of father in their homes O king yes. of glory father let them pray let them cry out your king of glory father release your spirit release your anointing of father raise up watchmen raise up watchmen over massachusetts O king of glory for this is the gate of father this is the gate of father lord you have not forgotten you United yeah. States you have not forgotten your people you have not forgotten the men and women father I know there are pastors who have lost hope there are pastors who want to give up oh father Lord strengthen them right now in the name of the Jesus name Christ of oh, father Jesus. release your spirit Amen. in their Amen. berries right Amen. now father Amen. Lord those Amen. who have lost Amen. hope oh father give them hope oh father Amen. those who are weakening down oh father Amen. give them strength to stand O oh, king of glory oh, father Lord in the name yes. that is above yes. any other name of king of glory father we pray that you may weaken down right now the evil power that is ruling of our father may you weaken the shroud of father may you dest oh, destroy god. the shroud of king of glory oh, father god. and lord 
we come against the spirit of depression we come against the spirit yes. of death in this Please, land Lord. we come right against now. the spirit of suicide in the yes. name of Jesus yes. Christ of oh Father Lord we come against every spirit of crime right now in the name that is above any other name of Father Lord we pray for the young men we pray for the young women right now we pray for the children right now we pray for the mothers we pray for the fathers in the name of Jesus Christ by the power of the Holy Ghost we pray believing and trusting in your name yes. thank you Jesus thank you Lord thank you Father and Father I just know that you're calling men and women into their callings. Yes. They have been standing back for literally some for almost all their lifetime, knowing that God had spoken to them when they were children even and imparted to them a faith. There are others who have lived your lives and literally wasted your, your, your substance. It doesn't matter. God can do more in the last five minutes of yes. your life. Yes. If you just live it out for God completely mm. and wholly, He can do more in the last minutes. Yes. Father, we think of that man on the cross yes. next oh. to Jesus. Yes. And His words were recorded. Yes. And every, every believer who, who reads the Bible and talks, talks about the crucifixion, yes. knows about the thief on the cross. And in one moment, in that humility of breaking before you, mm. he was able to crystallize something in eternity, God, and showed us that it is. What counts is what we do with the last minutes of our lives. What counts is what we do in this last hour. Father, we remember about the, the, the giving of the wage, the giving of the wage, and that set wage was there for a day's work and then uh, different people came at, at the nine o'clock hour and yes. different people came at the at the noon hour and some yes. people came yes. at the three o'clock hour yes. and some people came at, at five o'clock yes. just before closing time mm. and yes. you gave a reward yes. and so father yes. no matter where Hallelujah. we are yes. in this Hallelujah. time yes. it is the time to yes. engage yes. it is the moment for yes. saying Lord. we are going to be set free yes. we're going to Lord. move in your strength and yes. we're going to Lord. cause your Amen. glory to be seen Jesus. in all of the earth yes. and we praise you and we thank you because Lord this is your heart your desire is for people to arise yes. and we say the word of the Lord to you the word of the Lord to you is to arise shake off the dust move in faith into this hour and Father, I'm just going to ask that you would give Michael one more little word about the gate and the loosing and releasing. And just speak that, brother, right in the camera and into the hearts of people, even now, because there's destiny that's about to be loosed and released. Yes. I know that God is opening up a gate, a new gate of a season, not only to the nation, but in your life. That is my prayer. Like David put it in the book of Psalms 24, let every gate open, even the everlasting gates, even those gates of iron. And, and I pray in the name of Jesus that this will be a time of transition. I feel a transition mm. in the spiritual realm. We move from one season to another. May this be a season of exploits. May the Lord take you to the next stage of your destiny. In Jesus' name, amen. amen. Amen, amen. And like it says there in Daniel, be strong yes. and do exploits. Yes. And God is going to do them through you. Yes. And as you enter into this hour, as you enter mm. into this day, the power, the power of God is going to rest upon you like never before. Take his power to those who have need of his power people who need to be awakened from their slumber, people who need to come to the saving knowledge of Jesus Christ. This is your destiny, mm. to be an emissary of the King of Kings and Lord of Lords. Amen. Thank you, gentlemen. Thank you for being with us here on this, uh, this Wednesday evening and this time of prayer. And we know that God is going to continue to bless you as you are faithful to Him. 
and Julius, you're going to be around. <laughs> Hallelujah. You're going to just be around. I invite you. I know you've got other places to go, but I invite you just to invest in Lion of Judah as well. Amen. And we just know that God is going to take and do great things. Amen and amen.